This morning, I want to talk about life expectancy. Now, I know I, I run the risk of sounding like an insurance salesman, uh, right? They always talk about lifespan, life expectancy. Your lifespan is, okay, uh, like Deb said, you're born a certain day and you die a certain day, and that's your span. Uh, now, expectancy is like all of us, let's say, who live in the United States, right now, you can, it wouldn't be crazy for you to live to 76. That's sort of an expectancy. Some, some, you know, go to be with Jesus a little earlier, some way later. I uh, was hanging out with somebody a couple weeks ago, uh, 95, right? She came in here and hung out. She was a family member. We had a baptism in here. 95, uh, right? Brittany's grandma, she's 94, 95. She's 95, right? Like, whoa. I mean, that's, that's way bigger than that. So um, the, the, in, if you go to the CDC website, there's a whole ranking. Uh, PA is like right in the middle, somewhere between 71 and 80. Uh, so if you want a higher life expectancy, move to Hawaii. Uh, there's no mystery there, am I right? You're just chilling, eating pineapple, and, you know, listening to Don Ho records, I guess. I don't know if that's what you do. It's really silly. But um, and, and Mississippi, I was actually surprised. I thought it's a pretty chill place, and I thought you'd live a long time. Like down there, but I guess there's a lot of alligators, so if they get you, you got to watch. There's still a lot of dangerous things happening. Um, now, if you go in, in biblical times, Old Testament, you got big numbers. You got Adam 930, uh, 969 for our boy Methuselah. And so those are, are really old. So when you're like 200, you're like just getting going, right? You're like a baby. Almost, I guess, in there. Yeah. But what's weird to me is like you had that, and then like now we're like at that 70s, 80s, 90s, but then you go like I, I read somewhere like 1500s to like the 1800s, like 25, 30, maybe 40. Like you're really old if you're 40 years old if you make it that long back then. Uh, now, again, there's a lot of factors, uh, health care, uh, you, know, you know, things like that. I, I, I read somewhere that all up until like the 1800s, uh, they didn't wash their hands before surgery. Could you imagine that dude just used the restroom and it wasn't like a regular restroom? Didn't wash his hands and just cut you open. Yeah, you're getting a nasty staph infection for sure. Uh, so, yeah, it, it was tough. If you even made it, right? A, a, a infant mortality was huge. That was in like 20, 30% in some of those places. Uh, but what I want to say today is that our view of life expectancy is totally, totally, totally wrong. That, that even the 900 year life expectancy is way too short. I mean, it's, it's, it's short in a way that I can't even express to you today. Because in this series, this I Believe series, we've been looking at this, at what we confess every week in the Apostles' Creed. Right? We, we, we believe in a God who made us, right? Father, uh, maker, or creator of, of all things. Jesus, his son, who, who died for us, rose for us. He's coming again to take us home. Right? See, even, even your rising is in the, the part about Jesus. Because he's coming back. He's going to bring a new heavens and a new earth. Uh, and then the last couple of weeks, we've talked about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church. The, uh, we looked at the uh, con, um, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. And, and today, and we confess this every week, that I believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. But here's the thing. Do we really believe that it applies to us? You know what I mean? Like if someone were to ask you, are you going to live forever? Would you really say with confidence, yeah, because Jesus died and rose for me. Un, without, right? Not prideful because that, that's not, so some will say, well, man, you're boasting. Well, yeah, if it was all about me, that, that's true. Then I'm full of myself and I should just close my mouth. But, but I'm not talking about, I didn't do this. He paid the price. He defeated death. He, he died and rose. And, and because of that, I will rise. So, so when we talk about death and we talk about the creed and all these things, uh, it, it should really be more like the, uh, the words to, to we believe. Remember that, the second song we sang? So let our faith be more than anthems. Anthems are epic, aren't they? He's going, I want our faith to not just be some words that we say. 
not just something we do, oh, because we're in church. No, let it be greater. Let our faith be greater than the songs we sing. Why? Because in our weakness and temptations, we believe. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit who's given us new life. We believe in the resurrection. He's coming back again. I mean, I I want us to sing and sing and sing and not just be like, yeah, I believe in this. And then when, when the least little thing comes that, that might cause us to doubt or, or cause us to fear, we freak out. God doesn't want us to freak out. Jesus didn't say the words that he said today, that if you hear his word and believe in him, you have, those are English, you have eternal life. Past tense, it's already there. It's in your pocket. You got it because he gave it to you. Listen to this. Did you, did you hear that in, the, in that gospel reading? He goes, he does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. So here's the deal. Because Jesus died and rose, look, death has been taken off the table for you. Do you see it that way? Like it's not, even a, it's not even a possibility because we believe in him. Now, again, I can reject all of that, right, and choose some other way to live. Choose something else to, 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 to put my trust in and believe in. But, but, I, but I believe this. I, I believe what, what he has done for me. Now, I, I want us to look at what it says in here. Uh, because I, I think this, this passage and many others like it, the, 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 what Jesus said in John, what, what, what Paul says here in, in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, changes our way of looking at life expectancy drastically changes it because think about this um you're, you don't live to 100 do you now, now maybe in this life right where, where i look like this but my life expectancy is eternal i, I know debbie with, with, with the kids she was like do, do you have a concept of eternity and i was like no i don't <laughs> anybody have that anybody like dial that in like i can explain it Right? We're all, we're all, I, I, am, I am on the same page as a two-year-old on that one. Or a six-year-old, or a 26-year-old, or a 36, you know, you, we can keep going the numbers up. Uh, the most learned person uh, ever, Albert Einstein, or some other dude like that, is still, uh, this, this is God stuff. And I think it's baffling to us, and, and, and Paul calls it a mystery here for a reason. Because then I wouldn't need him. It would just be like a puzzle that I have to figure out, another life hack. And and maybe there's an app for it, right? And I just grab the app, and it's the Get to Heaven app. And and right, day one, you do this. Day two, you do this. Day three, right? And by the end, you're good. No. How brutal would that be? But that's what we're doing sometimes. Look at what Paul says. And I'm not going to go through that whole... um, I think we can all agree that uh, from 35 to about 49 verses was tough sledding, right? That was difficult. That was uh, going through a snowstorm without snowshoes. Very, 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 very t- tough. Um, but, what, but he gets down to it in verse 50, I believe. He says, look, I'm going to tell you, brothers. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does what's perishable inherit the perishable. So, it, I, again, I can't do this in my strength. I'm not going to get exhausted. And maybe this is the problem is we have all these jokes uh, where, where, you know, you're, you die and, and you go up there and, and you got to sort of how navigate the pearly gates and, and Paul's the, uh, uh, Peter's the security guard and you got to have the right thing to say. And it's like, I don't see that in Scripture. What we get in Scripture is God coming back to take us home. Jesus said that, didn't he, in, in, in John 14? He said, my father's house, man, it's got rooms. It's got a place for you. In fact, I went and I, I prepared a place for you. And, and guess what I'm going to do? You don't have to worry about, about how you get there uh, or, or any of those things. He picks us up. It's not like you have to f- call an Uber, a divine. Imagine that, like a heavenly Uber. I need to find a ride to heaven. No. He says, I pick you up. Don't worry about the time. I've got it. Just, just live your life now knowing that that's true, that I've taken all of that off your plate. What's perishable can't inherit the imperishable, so you don't have to worry. He says, look, I tell you a mystery. Behold, check this out. You shall, you're, we're not going to sleep. It's not like it's this, like it's all over and there's nothing. 
He says, no. We will all, not some of us, but all be changed it's going to happen in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. That trumpet's going to sound, and the dead are going to be raised. How imperishable. They will now be eternal, unable to break down like ours do. I think all of us, and, and, and a lot of people say, oh, it's 50. When you get to 50 years old, you start to feel it. I don't know about you, but, you know, we, we feel it at every age, don't we? None of us is limitless in terms of their energy. It feels like the kids are, doesn't it? Right? Mom, dad, right? It feels like they have, like, wait, wow. I, I always say it. Like, I see the kids running around here at preschool, and I'm like, man, if I had that kind of energy. It might be more than mine, but they have to go to sleep, don't they? They, they, still, they're still, they still run out of juice at the end of the day. That's just humans. That's, that's, that's what happens. It's, it's all of our limitations, right? And they just get, it seems to just get worse and worse and more difficult as, as time goes on. But here's the hope, man. We're going to be changed. What this perishable thing that I have is going to put on something imperishable. Th- this mortal body is going to put on something that is immortal. In fact, it's going to put on immortality itself. Now, again, I don't know what that looks like. I was talking with somebody after, after uh, the first service, and it was like, I don't know, is it going to be like the best version of me? I, I hope not, because I don't think there's the best version of me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want you all having a look at me for eternity. Uh, I, I don't think any of it's going to matter, honestly. The point is that we will not die ever again. Death off the table. The perishable puts on imperishable, imperishability. The mortal puts on immortality. And when that happens, you have this saying that is written. It comes true. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? So because of Jesus, because he died and rose, we get to have the most classic trash talk in eternity, don't we? I preached this, sir. I had so much fun preaching this on Easter. Uh, I, I used uh, the, uh, the Queen song, We Will Rock You. Remember that? Boom, boom, psh, boom, boom, psh. This, this, that, he stole that from here. I really believe, right? Brian May, Freddie Mercury, they're like, oh, yeah, boom, boom, psh. You know, and, and it's, it's this thing, listen, this thing that we fear so much, death, Paul's going, God, Jesus has changed things so much that you can look at even that, the ultimate thing. Now, it's the one thing we can't fix. It's the one thing we can't escape. He said, you can look at that and go, what you got? All right, death, what you got? Because death, listen, death got, has got nothing when he's faced with the cross on his face with that empty tomb. He's got nothing. There's nothing he can do about it. Jesus, the stone was rolled away. He came out of the tomb. He's alive. And notice how this, this creed like all comes together. It's not like we have this body, you know, resurrection of the body and life everlasting. It has nothing to do with all that part about Jesus dying and rising. It's got everything. It's all one big unit. It's the same God that we're talking about. And it's all that he has done for us. Because the sting of death is sin. Jesus died for that. The sting of the power of sin. It's the law, right? All its accusations answered on the cross, Correct. It still will accuse us. It will still threaten us. But here's our answer. Our answer is thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I I want my life, I want your life to be a a song of victory. Not that I'm great. Right? My best days, I'm, I'm pretty much a hot mess. But, but he died for me and rose for me. I have that victory. He gave that to me as a gift. He said, yes, Fred, you now have eternity. You, have, you don't earn it. You don't deserve it, but it's yours. Check it out. And, and I want you to live every day with all the things you've got to face, with all the things that all of us have to face, 
the health issues, the, the people around us that we lose. With, with this, to say, look, thanks, thank you, Lord, for the victory over death and the grave that you won for me because you're so awesome and you're so incredible. And so what this does to our life expectancies is sends it through the ceiling. It has no end. And wait for it. This changes your life expectancy, meaning the what you can expect out of life today. See what I did right there? Kind of flipped it around. Your ex, what do you expect out of life? It's not just I suffer all of this and then I die. How many times have you heard that? Why get excited? Why, why get into life? Because, man, you just you struggle, you struggle. What, what's the point of all of it? Paul's going right here. He goes, be steadfast because of this. You have eternal life. You are eternal, man. You, you're you're, you're going to keep on going. You're going to be changed. You're going to be transformed. You're going to have this, this, this heavenly body that's, that's, that's not uh, you know, subject to death or any of those things. So be steadfast. Be immovable. Be abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that in the Lord, your labor is never in vain. It's never in vain. I think it's the biggest lie that, that, that I hear and that people try to, try to throw at me or try to throw at the church or try to throw at us. Ah, what you do doesn't matter. But this is the one place and we are the only people in the world <laughs> Who make an eternal impact. Let that sink in. Where else can you go and hear that, 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 that death has been defeated? I can go to Paley Hospital. Am I going to hear that from Paley Hospital? Anybody? You go, oh, yeah, Fred. Yeah, we've got, the, we've got the answer. No, there's things that come up against even the best surgeons, the best doctors, the best everybody. And they're like, well, that death thing, we can't. We can, we can stave it off a little bit. We can hold it back a little bit. But it's coming. And we could say, yeah, I get it. But he gave me the victory over that. Jesus died to give me the victory. I'm going to stand on that. I'm going to live my life in a steadfast way. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at these things. Like, I have a father who loves me. I have a, a savior who died for me. I have, a, I have the spirit living within me. Because listen, folks, the devil's going to try to move you. That's why he says the word steadfast. He's going to be like, like uh, my son plays hockey, and uh, it, it's hard to be steadfast and immovable, isn't it, when somebody's trying to, ch- trying to ruin your day by checking you into the boards? Um, but, but when you're confident, when you know what you're doing, right, you can, you can kind of, that, that dude can bounce off you sometimes. Death bounces off of us. It's going to come at us. He's going to rush us. He's going to try to knock us over. But we can always be abounding in his work. That work is never in vain. You might not see the fruit of it right away. That's the hard part. I want instant. But I can know that when, I'm, when, I, when we show the love of Jesus to other people, when we're caring, when we listen, when we're helping the, those people out, and, we, and we're not going to get anything in return, we're praying for people. We're doing all those things. That labor is not in vain. Never. Because it might mean, here's the thing. Here's the hope. It might mean that somebody gets to spend eternity with us. And have that peace and have that joy and have that love right here and right now. Now I'm going I'm to swing for that fence every time. And I want to see that happen all the time. Because that's our life expectancy, that, that, that we're going to change, that, that God's going to change some people. It's going to depopulate hell, right? We want to work on that <laughs> and, and, and bring this victory to as many as we can. In his name, we pray.